Welcome back to the Boost Plant Channel, where we cover everything aquascaping and we try and entertain and inspire you along the way. My name is Logan with Team Boost Plant, and today we are tackling the topic of CO2 injection in the planted aquarium. We're gonna discuss the pros and cons of CO2 injection. We're gonna talk about the different methods for adding CO2 to your planted aquarium. And we're also gonna give you the basics of how to set up a CO2 system for your planted aquarium. Before we dive into the topic, be sure to like the video and subscribe subscribe to the channel for lots more great content like this. Now let's get started. So why do plants need CO2 in the first place? Well, CO2 contains carbon and plants are mostly carbon. They're primarily composed of carbon and they get it from CO2. Now out in nature with terrestrial plants and terrestrial trees, plants have free access to the atmosphere, which is rich in CO2. So they have an abundance of CO2 that they can take anytime they want and they can take as much as they need. But things are a little bit different underwater. So in nature, underwater plants can get by with the natural CO2 levels that occur in bodies of water, be it a river, a creek, a stream, or a lake. However, in the planted aquarium, CO2 levels are naturally very low. Your fish will produce some trace amounts of CO2, and some CO2 from the atmosphere, from the water on the surface agitating, will enter the tank. But generally speaking, these are very trace amounts, and they're not enough to really get you that well-manicured aquascape look if that's what you're after. So this is where injecting CO2 into your tank is going to come in handy. The general theory is by providing plants plenty of what they need, there won't be any limiting factors and you can really allow them to grow and thrive. Now let's talk about some of the pros and cons of injecting CO2 into your planted aquarium, and then maybe ask some questions that'll help you determine whether or not CO2 is right for you. So to start with the pros, to reiterate, plants will absolutely thrive when CO2 is not a limiting factor. Once again, plants are mostly carbon, so they really need carbon to create more plant mass and grow and propagate and spread out. Additionally, if you have healthy plants that are thriving, it's gonna limit the chance of nuisance algae taking hold. One of the best ways to prevent algae in the planted aquarium from ever taking hold is to give your plants everything they need and to create lots of plant mass. And CO2 is gonna help you get there. Some of the cons of injecting CO2 into your planted aquarium are first and foremost, it can be rather expensive upfront. There's a bunch of equipment you have to purchase in the beginning that can have a high upfront cost. But generally speaking, once you have all the equipment, it's fairly inexpensive to maintain. Additionally, when injecting CO2 into your tank, if the proper instructions aren't followed, it is possible to create a toxic level of CO2 in your tank and gas and ultimately kill your fauna. So it's very, very important that if you do go this route, you're well researched, you follow instructions, and you keep an eye on the amount of CO2 being injected into your tank because at high levels, CO2 is toxic to all fauna. So now it's time to ask yourself, is CO2 right for you? It really depends on what your goals for your tank are. If you're after that well manicured, vibrant aquascape that you see on Instagram and YouTube with bright colors and densely planted stems, then CO2 is gonna be necessary to get there. However, if you're willing to keep low light plants like Microsorums and Anubias and Cryptocorans, then you can probably get by without CO2. So number one, you wanna ask yourself, what types of plants do you want to grow? Next, you wanna ask yourself, what fauna do you want to keep? Because certain fish like discus fish and betas are going to be very sensitive to high levels of CO2. So you don't want to inject super high levels of CO2 with species that are going to be very sensitive to it. And finally, you want to ask yourself, what's your budget? How much am I willing to spend? If you have a very, very tight budget and you're just barely scraping by enough funds to get a tank and maybe some fish, CO2 injection is probably going to be out of the question for you. But if you've saved a bit and you want to really do things the right way, then CO2 injection is only going to enhance your aquascape. And despite your goals, it is important to note that all plants will benefit from the injection of CO2. So if it's in your budget and you're willing to keep species that can tolerate it, then CO2 injection can only help. 
So now it's time to talk about the different methods of CO2 injection and then how to set up these different basic CO2 systems. So first off, we have the more low tech, less elegant DIY CO2 method. Some of the pros are it's significantly less expensive than a full pressurized system. It's typically much smaller and it's usually less intimidating to a beginner. However, some of the cons are oftentimes the DIY CO2 mixes are a little bit inconsistent. You can't always control the pressure and the injection rate and you often have to replace bottles of chemicals and mixtures. So over time, the cost can add up, but it has a significantly lower upfront cost. And we highly recommend the Aquario DIY CO2 system. In order to set up the Aquario DIY system, you'll take the bottle, which contains a mixture, you'll add some water, you'll shake vigorously about 100 times, and then you'll wait 24 hours. Then you'll add some additional components to the mixture, and eventually pressure will build up, you're going to connect the bottle to some CO2 proof line, and then you'll connect that line to a CO2 diffuser. And Aquario makes a fantastic CO2 diffuser that will create teeny tiny little bubbles that will spread out through the tank and make contact with your plants and dissolve in the water. Next up, we have the higher tech higher upfront costs, but much less maintenance version, which is the full pressurized CO2 system. So a pressurized CO2 system is going to have an upfront cost that is relatively high compared to other methods of CO2 injection. With a pressurized canister, you typically have to buy the canister that holds the CO2 itself, and then you need a pressure regulator, like the Ultimate Nature Systems regulator, which we carry on the Boost Plant website. Finally, that regulator connects to airline hosing, and then just like with the DIY system, System, the airline hosing connects to a diffuser, which creates teeny tiny little bubbles that make contact with the plants and dissolve into the water. So one of the biggest advantages of the pressurized system is that you can typically buy a large canister that you basically won't have to touch for many, many months. It can essentially be set it and forget it. You'll connect the canister and the regulator, which often has a solenoid attached to it, which is automated on off to a timer. And then you set the time you want the CO2 to turn on typically one hour before the lights turn on in your tank. And then you set when you want the solenoid and regulator to turn off, typically one to two hours before the lights on your aquarium go off. So once you set that up, you won't have to touch the system again until the tank runs out. And depending on the size of the tank, that could be many, many months, all the way up to a year. The additional benefit of the pressurized system is that it's super high tech and elegant looking. So it really depends on what your goals are, what your living environment is, and how much money you want to spend. Either route is going to get you results that are favorable. It just depends on whether or not you're willing to spend that extra bit of money up front and how much maintenance you're willing to do on your CO2 system. So we mentioned that with both of these CO2 injection methods, at the end of the CO2 proof hosing is a CO2 diffuser. Those are considered in-tank CO2 diffusers. There are also two other common ways of injecting CO2 into your planted aquarium. One of them is the inline atomizer, and this works great if you have a canister filter. You connect the CO2 proof hosing to the outflow hosing of your canister filter, and there's a little diffuser that sits in line. And the inline atomizer that we carry on the Boost Plant website is the Canvi atomizer. So this can be a really sleek way of getting CO2 into your aquarium without having anything in the tank itself. Additionally, because it's in line of the canister filters outflow, it does a really good job of evenly distributing the CO2, which is very important. And finally, we have one alternate way of inline CO2 injection that doesn't actually connect to your canister filter. And this this is the Aquario Neo Mixer. So this is the latest system of inline CO2 injection. And this diffuser, which is the Aquario Neo Diffuser, actually fits perfectly into the Aquario outflow. So again, this is a super sleek way to inject CO2 into your tank. But with this method, you don't actually have to cut up the outflow of your canister filter like you would with the inline atomizer. 
With the pressurized CO2 method, you'll have to determine your injection rate by adjusting a needle valve. And we can't give you a blanket statement of what injection rate to go for because it really depends on the size of your tank, the placement of the CO2 diffuser, the filter, the pressure. But a generally good idea is that if you're working with a 10 to 30 gallon tank, start somewhere around one bubble per second, observe your drop checker. You want the drop checker to turn lime green after two hours of the lights being on. And if you hit those levels, you know your injection levels are correct. If it's still blue around that time, you're gonna wanna turn up the CO2 a little bit at a time, observe for a day or two, and then make any final adjustments. If it turns yellow, you know you probably have too much CO2 and you wanna be very careful, especially if you have fauna in your aquarium. With the Aquario DIY CO2, unfortunately you cannot adjust the injection level. So it's recommended that you only use this system on a 10 to 30 gallon tank. You don't wanna use it on anything under 10 gallons because you risk over injecting and causing toxic conditions. So now that we've discussed the different methods for getting CO2 into your planted aquarium and how to set up a CO2 system, it's time for some final tips that'll help you along your CO2 journey. So the first tip is a reminder that CO2 can be very toxic at high levels, and it is very possible if you overinject that you can gas your fish and all of your fauna. So be conservative in the beginning, observe, and keep a drop checker to monitor CO2 levels. If you're finding that it's turning a very light green or a yellow, you likely have too much CO2 in your tank, and you're gonna wanna reduce the injection rate. Experiment with CO2 levels in the first place before adding fish to the aquarium. So typically, when when you set up an aquascape, you set up the CO2 on day one, and you won't add fish for a few weeks as the aquarium is cycling. This is a good opportunity to dial in your CO2, check the levels with a CO2 drop checker, and establish consistency, because like everything with the planted aquarium, consistency is key. You certainly don't want fluctuating levels of CO2 on a daily basis. You wanna set the proper injection rate and then keep it there for many, many months. You do not want those levels to be fluctuating. So with those tips in mind, get out there, do some additional research if you need it, and put together your first CO2 system because it's gonna unlock all sorts of options in your planted aquarium, and it's gonna really allow you to keep any type of plant. So thank you so much for watching. This has been the 10th episode of this educational series that we launched earlier in the summer, and we're really excited to have made it this far, and we really wanna thank you all for your support thus far. We have a ton of additional topics coming up in the future. Some of them including discussing specific fauna, full setups of aquariums, countdown lists, like 10 things we wish we knew before we started aquascaping, as well as some tips for creating a beautiful professional looking aquascape. So if any of that sounds exciting, go ahead and subscribe to the channel because we've got so much coming in the future. And do us a favor, let us know down below in the comments what topic you'd like to see us cover next. We love hearing from you. We're really grateful for your support. This has been Logan with Team Boost Plant. Now get out there and create something beautiful.